welcome back. We're now going to send it to the sports crew who are on location for this week's show. Hi, and welcome to this week's Sports Chat. I'm Chris Smith alongside Alex Dingman. We're on location here at the softball field. I want to talk a little Baker baseball and softball first to get us started. Baseball team 6-14 and 14 right now, 3-11 and 11 in the conference. On a bit of a skid throughout the last week, but did manage to get uh, one win against Benedicting in their recent series last weekend. Alex, tell me a little bit about the series. Yeah, they even scored 11 runs there in Atchison. At first, they played two here in Baldwin City, and then they went two and played away at Benedictine. And they actually have now lost 11 out of their last 12 games. They went on a 10-game skid. Then uh, they lost the first game of the doubleheader in Atchison, won the second one. But they got their bats going a little bit, scoring those 11 runs. Westerhouse has been real consistent. Dusty Griffin's coming along now. And if they can just get those bats going, which really has been one of the biggest troubles with this team, and uh, also get some of that pitching going as well. I know Joe Kaup, Nick Bird have struggled somewhat, but they're usually consistent players. But divisional play has just started, so if they can kind of turn this around a little bit, get hot, go on a little run, they definitely have the talent to do it. They just haven't quite got up to their expectations, and I think really the weather, once the sun starts coming up, starts warming up a little bit, I hope those bats start heating up as well. Yeah, certainly. Definitely not out of the playoff race. Um, on the other side, softball, currently 1-16, and 0-8 and in conference. They've had a really tough road lately. They've played some really difficult teams, played Rockhurst, a Division II school, and then went up into Iowa for a tournament that was really challenging, and it just seems like they haven't been able to put a full, uh, full softball game together. When pitching's been good, they haven't brought their bats and vice versa, but we'll look for them to step up. Uh, Wednesday April 2nd they go at Mid-America and then they're back home here April 9th against Graceland so fans they could really use the support yeah, go out there support and them. cheer them on that always helps out you know they're having a, a down year this year but if the crowd comes out here and supports them it might inspire some good play and they could still finish the season well and at least have some confidence going to next season yeah absolutely remember they're really young and they're an entertaining exciting team to watch nevertheless so come out April 9th versus Graceland uh, next on the slate, Alex, Major League Baseball, home opener for the Royals coming up and just opened up their series with Detroit, big 5-4 win in the, uh, yep. on opening day. How did uh, you think the Royals looked? Well, you know, not too bad. Really, uh, pitching-wise, pretty good start by Gil Mesh to get the season going. Last year, in his uh, 12 losses, they only scored 11 runs for him, so the run support wasn't there. And this time, they got their bats going as well to match his pretty good pitching in that game. And then an unlikely hero of their late, Tony Pena, who uh, really isn't known for having that great of a stick, but he showed it after having not such a good game, stepped up there in the 11th and got that uh, winning hit. Right. And so that's just a huge way to start the season. Right now, they're tied for first in the division. We love it. One and that? undefeated. And then how about Alex Gordon? He had a huge day against Detroit on opening day, yep. a two-run home run to uh, really get him going, bring him back into the game 3-2, to two, and then, of course, the diving uh, put out at third to end the game. So mm -hmm. congratulations to Alex Gordon and the Royals. Yep. Moving on, we'll talk a little March Madness. Sure. Alex, our picks have almost held up entirely, three out of four in the final four, which ain't bad. And yeah. uh, Texas let us down a little bit, but they ran into a, quite a juggernaut in Memphis who looks like the hottest team right now, probably playing the best basketball rows outstanding there I mean, unbelievable there's so many freshmen this season that are good that it's hard to distinguish one as the best michael beasley stats wise had the best season but he was also looked at on that case state team as the go-to guy every single right. game memphis has got a lot better players around him supporting cast and yet he's still bringing it and then he shows in the tournament just how dominant and just how much more athletic he could be than everybody else on the court well, how about that Kansas-North Carolina matchup? Everybody's been waiting for it. Roy's boys versus KU. Yep. Final four, national semifinal, big time implications. I know you're a KU guy. Who do you got? Yeah, why play with Roy when we can play with ourselves, right, Smitty? Yeah. And uh, we'll see how it works out. It's going to be a tough matchup for KU, especially coming off that game against Davidson, who was just running through the tournament, doing such a great job on Stephon Curry's back, who was averaging only 30 points a game. And then he comes in, scores 25 against KU, doesn't take the last shot, which I don't understand how that can happen. He's bringing the ball up the court. But <laughs> that's a different discussion. Obviously, as a KU fan, I was glad how it worked out. I about had a heart attack there at the end of the game, but they pulled it out. And so they're just going to have to completely wipe that game away from their memory, besides Sasha Khan, who was 6 for six with 13 points in that one but the guard play wasn't there I don't think Brandon Rush was assertive enough Mario Chalmers was three for four from three but the rest of the team not doing so good from the perimeter and so they're really gonna have to change that against North Carolina who's been scoring a lot of points in this tournament and Tyler Hansborough we all know what he can do he scored 28 points in that last victory he was the regional player uh, you know for that uh, side of the bracket and you know, he's going to be a dominant force down low. However, we got some bigs that we can definitely rotate in there. And right. Arthur, Jackson, Khan, and even Aldrich. 
So if we can get him in some foul trouble, take him out of the game, that would really affect the overall outcome, I believe. And I think KU probably has more talent on the team. It's just can they play better ball on that day? And we'll see. Exactly. Yeah, we'll have Russell Robinson will have to step up on Taiwan Lawson now that he's back as well. And with regard to Hansborough, I think you hit the nail on the head. They got to get him in foul trouble early. And essentially, by the time we get down there, Cole Aldrich is going to be just a player to give five fouls and just really bang with Hansborough down low. So we will see what happens. I know you had UCLA over Kansas in, in your bracket final. I had Kansas over UCLA. Hopefully Memphis doesn't uh, doesn't shock us all. I don't all. think UCLA is stopping Memphis, but we'll see. UCLA's got what five uh, all five starters going in the NBA, so that's a good team. But Memphis right now, yeah, they're looks pretty unstoppable. They're winning when Josh Schiff's only scoring four points. So what yeah. does that tell you? Yeah. All right. Well, now we are going to kick it into the athlete of the week segment with Mary Loveland and her athlete of the week, Joseph O'Donnell. A baseball team can often rely on its pitcher when it comes down to the wire. This week. Baker's Joe O'Donnell pitched his way into Orange Line's Athlete of the Week. The thrill of baseball was brought back to O'Donnell after he pitched a winning game against Benedictine College last week. Came out in that game and I think we did get four in the first inning. We came back and got a couple more in the second and third. So it's a lot easier to pitch when, when it's you know four or five to nothing as opposed to uh, you know, one to nothing when you, you can't really let the team score any more runs. Mm -hmm. I think that was the biggest thing about that game is, is I got to pitch with the lead the entire game, so that was nice. The excitement of the game doesn't come by itself. Being the pitcher also brings pressure to O'Donnell. We just know that we have a lot on our shoulders because the game kind of revolves around us. Um, day in and day out, our job is to give our team a chance to win. And uh, if we can go out there and keep the runs down, um, I think our team is always in it. As O'Donnell looks into the rest of the season, he hopes the team will finish strong. We've struggled a, a little bit so far this year, so basically our main goal now is to finish on a positive note, um, win as many games as we can towards the end of the season, and uh, hopefully ruin some other team seasons, if not be able to make the playoffs ourselves. Yeah. When O'Donnell isn't playing baseball, his favorite thing to do still is to be around his teammates. Uh, well, I just like being outdoors and Hanging out with the guys on the team, uh, came here and kind of got lucky. I found a lot of friends on this squad, so I just like hanging out with them, being outside and messing around a little bit. With his goals set for the rest of the season, O'Donnell still has time to show more improvements. This has been Mary Loveland, KNBU TV. Thanks, Mary. Keep it up, Joe. This week in sports, I'm Chris Smith alongside Alex Dingman. We'll kick it back to the studio. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Orange Line. I'm Chris Campbell. And I'm Kelsey Epperson. We're going to leave you with a voice lab of Courtney West singing, It's a Good Thing He Can't Read My Mind. Thanks for tuning in. I am not complaining, I just made